folks, welcome back to the HS Tech Channel. In this video, we're going to take another look at Kex programming, and this time we're going to look at what it takes to get advanced map stuff done, such as reading input, and we're going to look at a slightly more complex COBOL example in the process of doing that. So hopefully you have followed up from the previous installment of this. So go ahead and fire off ISPF, and we're going to go ahead and drop right into it. So what we're going to do here is we're going to make a simple program that's going to provide us three options. It's going to ask us to just select one of them. We also want to be able to press PF3 to get out, and we want to be able to press clear to also get out of that transaction screen. So let's go ahead and look at how to do that. So I've went ahead and produced a map set here that we can look at. And this one is pretty much the same form as the last one. So, of course, make sure you're making this out of COBOL and you don't want to generate a PL1 map on accident or a C map. Down here, the same size as before, 80 by 24 terminal screen. If you're using an 8 by 43 terminal, you need to specify this here as 43. And of course, this is where we start. This right here is our thing that says what we want. Neutral is actually the white color, so there's all sorts of colors except there's no white, and that's because it's actually neutral. Normal and protected. Protected, of course, means you can't type over it and you can't tab to it. If we scroll down, you'll see our other options and you'll see the varying colors just like we had last time. If we come down here, we'll actually have a field. So over here, the label that goes on this macro line is the actual variable, well, kind of. It gets an extra letter thrown on it, so this has to be restricted to seven characters. Oops. And this is basically the actual variable that you're going to target when you send and receive stuff, or if you put something into a field and then send it, like output from something, or you're receiving something from the user, this is what you read it in. And this right here is something that comes just after this that basically hushes it, so to speak. Because if not, this underline will just go all over the screen until it sees the next field. So be mindful of that, you do need something right after any sort of field as sort of like a stopper, so to speak. And then it's right here in the macro definition. So we have our same job control language script as before. So we're used to running this. We'll go ahead and submit that. And I'll need to get out of this because as you see the data sets in use until the assembler runs there. Do note that there is video editing trickery at play here so you don't have to wait 10 minutes for that to run <laughs> on this old slow machine here. But now we have our copy book and you're used to seeing what these look like, hopefully. Here's our actual, well, here's our input map, and then here's our output map. And of course, the input map is gonna feature this right here is, this is really what we're after when we read something from a field. All right, now let's go back and let's actually look at the program. Now, this is a little bit more complex than what we had before because we need to copy something else. So we need to copy the file that has all of our aid keys listed and of course these are your interrupt keys your action keys if you will so your program function keys your enter your clear your system request all that stuff this right here is just the same old buffer we had before because we'll do it like that it's simply because all these kicks functions take pointers to stuff so this is why we have to have these variables so the first thing we're going to do is well this is unnecessary but it's, it just makes it look a little bit better we're going to throw our map on a screen. Erase means we don't want to type over the screen. We want to clear the screen before throwing our map on. Then, right after that, we're going to receive the map. Now, this right here will actually stall the program's execution. This right here is a blocking I.O. function, if you're familiar with the concept of non-blocking and blocking I.O. This will sit here and wait. As is means it's going to not translate stuff to uppercase. So note that we are checking the case of that choice input map field. We gotta have an uppercase A or it won't actually do anything, and you'll see that. And terminal means just receive the map from the terminal that started the transaction. So don't accidentally go to some other terminal and try to receive it. If you're doing advanced stuff, you're gonna wanna not have this, although you don't technically need this, it's good to have. Then, right after that, that's gonna set EIB8 if there's a, a key that's pressed. So did someone push PF3? If so, clear and get us out of here. Or did someone push the clear key? Okay, clear and leave. Now, if someone pushed a into our field, then clear the screen, put our string ready to go, put the length of the string, then throw the string on the screen, and then leave. Alternatively, if someone hit B or C, do the same thing. And then, of course, we're just going to loop forever. 
because this is the fall through case if nothing actually was properly entered. Alright, so we'll go ahead and compile that with the exact same that we had before. So here's our menu test program. I'll go and submit that and we'll look at the output of both of these just for fun. So here's our map assembly job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Same old thing we're used to seeing before. Oops, for those that can spell. There we go. No statements flag in this assembly. Brewing. And here's our job that compiled that. Of course, if you see the the message box down here at the bottom, I guess you could call this a message box, and that means you're successful. Alright, now let's go back up, and now let's switch over to our Kix terminal, which is apparently not registering. Okay, there we go. Not entirely sure what happened there, but now we'll go ahead and CEDA define map. Now, of course, we need to go figure out what our map is actually named. So go back to your load library that you had before, and of course, this is our menu map. And of course, oops, not in, but B, it's a binary file. So that is what we plug into this. Oops. Okay, I need to probably not do that. Yeah, it's actually already here because I've already keyed it in. And then of course you need to do the define program. This is difficult, this microphone's in the way. Same old, same old. And then we need to, of course, find the transaction. Yeah, we'll call it that. Yeah, it's already there. And then, of course, we need to CEDA, CEDA install group. Oops. There we go. Same thing we had before, except we now have our new transaction, our new program, and our new map set. Alright, so now we can get out here and we can run MNUT for menu test. And there we go, we have our field here. If we press PF3, it'll kick us out. If we type in lowercase a, b, c, it's not going to work. See, we got to do uppercase a. Or B or C. But if we just don't do anything and we press F3, of course it'll drop us back. Back out to the kicks command shell there. So that's really not that difficult. It's it seems a lot harder than what it really is. But really the important thing to know is this here. Oh, that's right, I'm in the editor, not the, not the browser. You need to make sure that you have these cutoff fields, if you will. Sorry, I'm actually editing the wrong file, and I'm just going off the of muscle memory here. <laughs> okay, the map set. You need to make sure you have these cutoff fields, or you'll end up with a situation where if you have an underlying field, it'll just run forever on the screen. Because the length is not the actual length of the field, this is how much memory is reserved for input and output. Because here's our three letters of victory here. Of course, it's actually plus one because we always have an extra attribute byte that gets sent with each option or each input of a field. And you can read the Kix documentation to learn more about that. But this is important. You've got to have sort of shutoff fields or you have to have something that comes after that. If you do use ansi 2 bms this will do it all for you. So that's the basics of that right there is it's not too terribly difficult to deal with maps and handle uh, input keys. It's just a little bit counterintuitive at first. Now if you're trying to do something multi-threaded, that is a whole different beast. That is a completely different beast and is a little bit trickier there. Or if you're doing something that involves calling a different transaction to receive a map that was specified by another transaction, that can be a little difficult as well, but you can do that. You can receive a map of any kind at any time. Because if we go and look back at our program, we do a kick send map, but this kicks receive map that follows it is entirely dependent on this send map having already ran. So if this send map is ran by another program and then we receive this map using this particular program or transaction here, Kix is none the wiser. It'll line up, that data will fall right into the map and it will work a-okay. Likewise, if you have some garbage on the screen 
and then you just suddenly receive a random map, you're going to get an error. Now, I should probably mention how you handle these errors. There's a couple of different ways to actually handle the errors, but you're probably going to want to consult IBM's documentation on this. But you can use a variety of exception catching techniques. For what it's worth, you should probably use the handle AID function, which is not too terribly difficult. But you essentially do it like this. We'll put it in right here just for fun. I'm not actually going to demonstrate this in use because it works exactly how you'd expect, but you do exec kicks handle AID, and then down here you do PA1. So if you push PA1, we'll go to somewhere, and if you have just any other key, you can go to elsewhere. And then that's it. So if you press PA1, go call this location. If you push any other key, go here. So that's the tricky way to do that. Then maybe uh, a more reasonable approach than doing it by using a bunch of if statements or a switch statement, but your mileage may vary. You definitely want to use the right one. Now there's also handle condition. So Let's say, actually I'll just keep editing the exact same file. Let's say that you do have a bad situation here. Which I need to do slightly more lines than that. Oops. We'll do an exec kicks handle condition. And we'll say that the error is map fail. Meaning there's something went wrong with that. Then at this point you can do all manner of things like this. So if you have a, if you want to link to something else, then you can do that right away. But if this error occurs, then you need to do something to get out of this. So for instance, let's say you have some kind of duplicate issue, then if you have a duplicate record, then you can go to remove, remove duplicates. There you go. Now, obviously, these two are mutually exclusive. You're not going to have duplicate records with the map fail. If anything, you would have something generic, like, like this. This right here is the catch-all. But if you have duplicate records in a vSAM file, bam, do this, of course, and exec. But we don't actually want to save that. So that's the gist of Kix programming for mapping and stuff. And next video, we're going to look at Kix on OS2 and Windows NT. Yes, those do actually exist. There's also kicks for Linux, and we're going to take a look at that as well. So good luck out there. Be safe, and good luck on your kicks programming.